Uh, I'm joined by Paul, of course, from Canon. We are standing right next to a Canon C700, so it's probably a good place to start. Now, there was not much new this year at the show. That doesn't mean that you guys are resting on your laurels. I, and I mean that sincerely, because you obviously had the 7200. You had the announcements for the 5D. Uh, we know there's other trade shows coming up soon, right, between IBC and Cinegear and whatever else is coming along the way. There's always stuff happening. However, right, a little wink wink from Paul officially. But let's start with the C700 because right behind us. So obviously it's a sort of a evolution of the C5, very successful C300 Mark II, C500 family. Different form factor. You guys are targeting it to a sort of a more narrative, episodic television market. Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely, Jeff. So I mean, the, honestly, the big thing about this camera and where it comes from is the fact that we have had a lot of people come to us from the, the narrative industry, from the cinema industry and say, we love the look of the C300, we love the look of the C300 Mark II, but we need to be able to put our accessories on these cameras. We need to be able to power our accessories. You need to give us a camera that we can actually use in the studio setting. And so that was really kind of the impetus behind it, was to make a studio camera, but still have the, you know, the pedigree of our Cinema EOS line, because the, the, the colors, the, the sensors, everybody really likes that. So. And yeah. I mean, absolutely. That's always the first thing people always say is, "I love the way the camera looks." And by far, we hear that all, like probably more than anything else because of that sort of magic that Canon's building into it. But you did things like you put a screen on the side and a screen on the other side, right? To make it a little bit friendlier. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely you know, and, and that was kind of the big thing was to make it more friendly about you know to the industry. And see, any AC walking up to this camera will look at him and already have kind of a, a familiar idea about how this camera works. You know, it's really kind of based on what the, the how the industry is moving in terms of this size of a camera. Um, but you know, so it still carries a lot of interesting things from the C300 Mark II. We have the ND, I mean the front almost looks like a C300 Mark II in a way. Um, we have the ND filters, the same system as the C300 Mark II. Um, and you know, a lot of the, the menu and everything is while you know it looks totally different, it still kind of harkens back to the the Canon menu system. So the nomenclature is the same, and all that stuff. It's just much more makes much more sense to people coming from that film world. And one interesting thing, which I don't think we talk about quite a bit, is the fact that you have a global shutter version of the camera too, for very for specific applications and yeah. sports and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. And so that was at NAB. We actually showed that for the very first time ever in public. The global shutter version, and that's uh, that's a very kind of specific beast, you know, really, really meant for those people who like, you know, obviously, like you said, sports, you know, high high motion, high speed, kind of stuff. It harkens back to the CCD style of uh, image capture. Um, no flash banding. You won't get half frames when the flash, you know, the strobes go off. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, but with you know, like all global shutter systems, you start sacrificing things. So you sacrifice the stop of dynamic range. You sacrifice the dual pixel autofocus, um, which you know may or may not be a big deal to people, especially in the cinema industry. If they're in your, if they're using PL mount lenses, and that that doesn't mean anything anyway. Um, so we showed that. But here's the thing: is though, is that you know the camera is modular in that way. You know, I can take this camera if I want to swap out the sensor, put a global shutter sensor in it. I can do that. If I have a global shutter camera and I want to go and put in the rolling shutter sensor, we'll do that. You know, send it back into Canon and get the service. Uh, you, absolutely, you got it. That's great. Speaking of lenses, obviously this one's the uh, one of the locking uh, EF mounts uh, with the 1880, which we know the announcement was the companion lens, the 70 to 200. The 70 to 200, yeah. Which definitely. we don't have with us today, but uh, you know, the, the genesis, of course, is that sort of. Small form factor, but you need the servo. Without like seven, you know, the, the seventeen to one twenty is beautiful, but not for everyone, right? So. Yeah, the seventeen to seventeen to one twenty is a hugely popular lens, a very beautiful lens, um, but it's you know it's expensive and it's uh, it's heavy. So we kind of this way is the, the compact servo is the name of this line of lenses, and we kind of really went for paring it down, making it smaller, making it more accessible, making it more affordable uh, for everybody. Now the 70 to 200s that we showed at NAB, really the only difference is the name. <laughs> physically uh, the same, I mean. Physically, everything is physically exactly the same on the two lenses. In fact, we were doing a test shoot on it uh, prior to NAB with both lenses, and I had both lenses in my hand, and we, you know, you can't tell the difference between the two. So, uh, so that's something that's really interesting is that you can have a two lenses that are perfectly matched physically so that you won't have to really change anything along accessory-wise for them. 
And that's important. Obviously, doc shooters, I mean, we just did that Lens series. We're still doing that Lens series. We're releasing those videos with Matt Porwall. And he, one of the points that he always drives home is, as a doc shooter, you can't be glancing at your lens. You don't have the luxury of an AC all the time. So you got to just know where everything is. So being able to switch between the two focal lengths, and that's a huge amount of range, uh, is, is hugely important. Right. So you know, basically, you know, 18 to 200, you cover in two lenses that are perfectly matched in the same size. So same color, everything like that. And then you add the tele-extender, right? And then you get... Yeah, you can do that. So you have you have some crazy uh, focal lengths at that point. That's great. And obviously this camera too is, is things like the, the Canon RAW, which we know is very, very powerful, uh, a lot of flexibility with the post-production side. So definitely designed for that market as well. But built, you know, the idea is that it's more streamlined in that it, it goes right on the back of the unit. No more external like kind of hardware stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up, actually. And we, don't, we don't have it here, but uh, so we teamed up with Codex. Uh, to create the raw system for the camera, and it is it is Canon raw. And one thing that you know, people you know about Canon raw is that it's it's uncompressed, uh, but that means it's very beefy. So it's you know hovering around that 14 megabytes per frame uh, in Canon raw. So it's a beefy, beefy raw, um, and that's why it just kind of makes sense, to, especially on this camera, where it's actually beefier on this camera than it ever was in the C500 or the C300 Mark II. Um, to team up with Codex, you know, kind of the, the leader in raw capture. Um, and make it so right now so it would actually extend if we were to pantomime it here it would actually be about this size right here with the recorder on there but you know then you don't have to mess with wires you don't have to do you know anything like that you have the super stable codex uh, system built into it so when you say beef you're talking about the format or you're talking about the physical build or both or yeah we I mean, we can apply that term to both but really I'm at that point I was talking about the actual file format but uh, the unit itself is beefy. Like it, it really just connects right into the, the camera. It becomes a, a part of the camera. It almost doesn't doesn't feel like it's separate from the camera at that point. But it's good. Beefy file is good, right? Where you say it's a, it's like a dense negative is sort of the analogy that we always use in the digital realm. And that's a good thing for color, so just being able to really manipulate all the dynamic range that the camera's actually able to capture. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and also it gives you the 12 bit, 12 bit 4K raw. I mean, um, a great. Which that's what the colors are really looking for, those, those bits. So. so great. Thank you again, Paul, for joining us. Uh, we, again, there's a lot of kind of new things coming and uh, always looking forward to whatever you guys have up your sleeve. So we will see you probably at Cine Gears the next time I'll see you. Absolutely. But great. So, Paul, thank you for joining us. Great to see you, Jeff. Thank you for joining us as well online. We'll catch you next soon. Jeff Smith coming up next. Thanks, guys.